For the past four years, sand has been shipped from the quarry siding just outside Bickerton Station. Although this has been achieved successfully, I found the siding was a little too short. It couldn't accommodate all nine hopper wagons plus the brake van. This wasn't entirely due to lack of planning. There simply wasn't enough space in that corner for a longer siding. As you can see from this plan, the quarry is tucked away beside the rock wall on the line leading to Bickerton, with very little room for extension. In fact, that corner is more angular than it appears on the plan. This photo gives a much clearer view of the quarry siding and how tight that corner is beneath the overhanging fir tree. If I did want to extend that siding, then either I would need to tunnel into the rock face, or I would have to turn it through 90 degrees to follow the rock wall round by the stream. Indeed, that's exactly what I decided to do. I worked out that not only could I extend the siding, I could install a run-round loop, and, while I was at it, I could also link the end of the siding to the main line as it approached Peckverton, giving me an interesting reverse loop when I had visitors, or use that new junction as a supposed link to Peckverton Castle on days when I was running my railway end-to-end. -end. So, never one to procrastinate unless it's doing the washing up, I surveyed the site for the new extension and run-round loop, and then worked out where the edge of the new extension was going to be. At this point, I used concrete blocks as markers, as I wasn't sure how much sandstone I would need and how much I already had sitting in that pile of rubble behind the garage. A trench was dug to create footings for the new rock wall, approximately six inches deep with a three inch layer of crushed stone at the bottom. A three to one mix of sand and gravel to concrete was then prepared, shoveled into the trench and left for a couple of days to set. Meanwhile, fragments of sandstone from my one day that will come in useful rock pile were nuzzled down into the setting concrete. And then, once the footings were completely set, gaps were filled with a three to one mortar mix of builder's sand and cement. This was squidged into place with a trowel and the fingers of rubber gloved hands. Concrete breeze blocks were then laid along the line of the track bed. These were placed onto rammed earth, then levelled using handfuls of sand under the corners and edges. Mortar was then forced into the gaps. This is largely to prevent weed growth, but also where the blocks are angled on curves to provide a continuous level surface for the track. And then the track was laid. I used plastic raw plugs in holes drilled into the blocks, with screws at intervals to hold the track in place. Points are left to float once the track on either side has been fixed down. I realise not everyone likes fixed track, but it's the method I've been using for the past 17 years, and it works for me. But the proof of the pudding, as they say? Here we see loco number 14, Black Hawthorn Burwoodsley, pulling a train of nine hopper wagons plus brake van into the old quarry siding. And now... It is rounding the curve and on to the new extended siding. The track is for now unballasted. I want to try it out for a few running sessions to see if any adjustments are required before ballasting. The train has now reached the run-round loop, which is plenty long enough to hold the complete train with room to spare. That structure on the right is the gatehouse for Peckverton Castle. It is, at present, as you can see, under construction. Thermalite aerated blocks have been carved to form the basic structure. The next stage will be to add texture, mortar courses and tiling, and detailing, windows, doors, etc. And then it will be coloured with cement dyes. And now back to our sand train. The loco has run round and detached the brake van, ready to be reattached at the other end of the train. And now the hopper wagons can be pulled forward to take their turn beneath the loading hoppers. I haven't decided yet whether to move the loading hoppers further up the siding. If I do, I will then have to devise a way for them to be filled. 
either extending the two-foot gauge feeder railway, or installing conveyors, or perhaps, maybe, even an aerial ropeway. And last, but not least, we see the Right Honourable Frances Tolmash and her latest conquest pootling along in their converted rail car, entering the portals of Peckforton Castle. During future operating sessions, I envisage special passenger trains or deliveries of victuals, coal and other sundry items making their way into the castle grounds through this gateway. Now, where should I cite that replica of Peckforton Castle? <laughs>